just hit this button here and that'll turn that on so let's take this mask to hold shift and bring it down the body so you will get this effect so once we get to this point um, I think this is 14 frames um, in between here so you're gonna go to the twelfth frame um, so once it freeze frames count twelve frames over and this is when we're gonna transition from the entire body being outlined just to the torso so take the outline white and outline green for the entire body and you sh should still have the opacity keyframes um, up if not just hit T let's make another keyframe by hitting this button here go forward two frames page down one two and then set them to zero and I go back and we're going to select our outline green torso outline white torso and torso grid take those three hit T we're gonna make some keyframes bring it to zero right here go forward two frames and then bring it up to 100 so it's basically just a little trade-off as we select the torso now once the torso is at 100 percent opacity go forward one more frame and then we're going to um, animate the dialog boxes up so the dialog boxes that appear for the torso would be the center box because that's our torso um, the left box is for the arm the right box is for the other arm the top box would be for the head so we'll save that until we pan up and obviously we'll turn on our torso text here but I'm gonna take our torso text and our center box since it's all one piece and move it right about here so it's a little easier to read and to see so now let's select all of our dialog boxes that are um, that we can see here so the right box the center box left box and the torso text we will hit T and we'll make a keyframe for all of that we'll start it at zero go forward one two three four frames and bring it up to 100 percent so now this torso dialog box actually flashes in and out because that's what we have selected so if we just select the center box and the torso text and go forward one two three four five six keyframes we will set a uh, keyframe for those layers and bring it down to twenty five percent then go forward another six then back up to one hundred then go forward another six back to twenty five and I believe this is when we start to pan up and I think all of these dialog boxes fade out let me check yeah alright so let's see here It's going to change from the torso to the head right about here. So we will take the opacity of our outline green torso, outline white torso, and torso grid. We'll make a keyframe for those. And we'll go forward two frames, set them to zero. Then go back two frames. And we're going to select our outline green head, outline white head, and grid head. Turn those on, hit T, make a keyframe, set it to zero. 
go forward two frames and set it to 100. And basically, we're doing the switch again. It's just switching like this. And this is very important. Another reason why you want to name your layers, because if they were not named, you would be going crazy right now. You may be going crazy right now anyway, because there's a lot of layers, but I guarantee you, if these were not named, it would be much worse. Alright, so these uh, dialog boxes are going to animate out, so let's select our torso, left box, center box, and right box, and we will make a keyframe for those. Go forward one, two, three, four frames, and set them to zero. So when we get to this point, they are going to animate back on. So let's wait until, from what it looks like from this footage, what we're going to do is wait till our camera stops. Then go forward one, two, three, four frames from when the camera stops. And we're going to select the right box, top box, left box, and the head. We'll turn the head on. We'll hit T, and we will make a keyframe um, for the head because the head does not have keyframes. And then we have to click this button right here for any one of these layers that are selected. And that'll just, as you can see, make keyframes for all of these here. And we will set everything to zero. Then go forward one, two, three, four frames and bring everything back up to 100. So now let's just animate um, this head um, box here in and out. So we will select this layer, this layer, both of the text layers, and we'll select the top box layers. And we'll go forward six frames, set the opacity to 25, go forward six more frames back to 100. Just keep doing that until um, it animates out. The, uh, the camera animates back out. Which would be right here. And we'll just set it all to 0. As well as the other layers. So right before it zooms out, we can select the um, torso, that's already at zero, we just need the left box and the right box as well as the outlines for the head and the grid for the head. Set a keyframe for all those by hitting this little button here. Go forward one, two, three, four, five frames and then set it all to zero. And that will give you your effect. Oh, and we can turn this grid off. Um, where is it? Grid wipe. Set the opacity um, of that layer. Just make a keyframe. Go forward one frame, set it to zero just so it's out of there. We forgot to animate this up, so let's take the grid wipe um, and hit U. That'll bring up our keyframes. Take the mask path make sure that it's completely above the subject that way you won't have what you saw before alright looks pretty good alright so now that we have most of our scene here um, animated and keyframed out what we're going to do is create this little piece right here that displays the health and the character's name. So if you go layer, new, solid, and you have the color picker here, you can choose this red, hit OK, bring the opacity of this layer down to zero. Let's zoom in here and grab our rectangle tool and mask the shape of this as best as you can. 
we're going to go a little bit past the cutoff point because it is faded out. So we have to make another mask here to fade it out. Now for these little triangles, you can just grab your pen tool and mask these out. And as for these rectangles inside, these, this little health display here, um, I'm actually going to make another solid for that. Bring the opacity to zero. Get the rectangle tool. Mask that out. And we'll select our mask and control D to duplicate. And just click and drag. Control D to duplicate again. And just keep going. All the way to the end. If you hold shift, you can get it to follow this horizontal line here, this imaginary horizontal line. And it'll be much easier instead of just eyeballing it. And it would take forever as well. Alright, so once all of this is masked out, let's take the rectangle tool again and make another mask about here. And we can bring the opacity of this layer back up to 100. We can turn off our little mask here. Set, um, well if you hit MM to bring up these mask options. Go down to the very bottom to the last mask. Set it to subtract and then just feather it like so to get that effect. Same goes for our other layer here. If we, let's see, turn the mask back on. Make a mask here. Make a mask here. And actually you want to extend this mask out beyond this point. just so when we feather it you won't see this piece. Set those two to subtract. Bring the opacity of our layer back up to 100. Turn off the little mask icon here. And if, you hit M if you hit MM or if you even just hit F, uh, you can bring up the feather options. And we can feather that to 32 and the other one can go to 32 as well you get that faded effect that looks pretty cool. As for the name here, you can put whatever you'd like. Um, I'll just put my YouTube name here in the right font, Monofonto. And we can scale that guy down. And we'll make it the same color the same red now you take all of that and you pre-compose it by hitting control shift C and we'll call that um, health go back to our main composition bring our health composition into this main composition 
and we'll scale that down to I don't know, 75 percent and this actually stays on the screen the entire time um, just besides the beginning and we'll actually instead of giving it a drop shadow one thing we can do to speed up render time is actually duplicate it and we're going to, apl to apply a tint effect to the bottom layer set it to black all the all the options to black and if we apply a fast blur to that bottom layer we can kinda give it a drop shadow effect that will render a lot faster than a drop shadow effect and we can set the opacity of that to I don't know 60 or so and that's just to, s to separate it from this green and as, I, as you can see here um, it has the drop shadow as well so we can just animate the opacity of that on um, maybe right here so take both of those, hit T um, make a keyframe, go forward five frames make another keyframe and we'll go back to this first one and just bring it down to zero so it animates in we can actually set the opacity of the bottom layer to 35 as long as this is, as this is visible you're good and we might even want to set this top layer to add or screen or we can just set it to normal and duplicate it and then set that to add or screen and then lower the opacity just a little bit maybe like 50 that's pretty hard to see let's try blurring out this middle layer let's see what that does for us kinda gives it a glow maybe something like that same thing we did with the text or the dialog boxes if we set it to screen that looks good whatever you guys think looks best you always can add your personal taste to it, to the to these things it doesn't have to be perfectly accurate but we are kind of re remaking an effect from a video game so that's pretty much it um just quickly we can go over color correction if we select everything here and pre-compose it control shift c main scene we'll make a new adjustment layer and apply a curves effect to that adjustment layer um, I like to go to the blue channel I believe you bring this up and you bring this down and that gives it a cool little look and we will make another adjustment layer and we'll give it a brightness and contrast effect this time and if we hold this button down up here go to our ellipse tool and double click it it will make a perfect ellipse here then we'll bring this down bring the brightness down set it to subtract we can hide the mask here and we'll hit F and we'll feather it out to give it a vignette and if you hit MM you can get the expansion options and just bring the expansion up and that looks pretty cool Now you always want to add the motion blur so don't forget the motion blur in our main scene and make sure everything has well those don't need it because it's not moving but make sure everything that's moving has motion blur and that it's checked on because it definitely adds realism to things that you're creating in After Effects